Howdy folks and welcome to the Snowy's Camping Show. You are here as usual with Ben and Lauren. The same thing I say every week. It feels repetitive, it doesn't it? It feels repetitive. <laughs> and I guess um, for us, because we're always doing it, but people who don't listen to us, they've got a week between hearing us say exactly the same thing. But Didn't anyway. We say it a few times. We say it a few times. <laughs> But yeah. as usual, don't forget wherever you're listening to hit that subscribe button, uh, whether that be on YouTube or your podcast app, um, and jump into our Facebook group, the Snowy's Camping Show, where you can join in the conversation because we've had some pretty good ones going lately. And we it's have. been it's been fun. I think the more people that join, the more sort of active the group gets. It's really cool being able to talk to people about yeah, different and things. We learn a bunch of stuff too. So yeah. that might turn into future episodes that we go, oh, I did not realize this. Let's talk about that with yeah, for sure. everyone else. Exactly yeah. right. And cool. today we're talking about um, camping chairs because we haven't really discussed camping chairs. And speaking of the Facebook group, somebody recently when they joined the Facebook group said that they would love to hear a bit more about camping chairs. Oh, right. um, and I, I don't know who you were. I'm sorry. It was a woman. So if you're listening to this and that was you, thank you very much. You've come totally prepared. You <laughs> have come totally unprepared. But, um, yeah, that's an example of okay. of how community feedback can influence the stuff that we talk about and things like that. So we, We'd rather hear what you want us to talk about rather than us tell, tell you what we want you to hear us talk about. <laughs> yeah, basically, something that, along those lines. I think that made sense. It made sense for the sure. Camp, camp chairs today, is, it's, it's a um, – I don't know, I guess it could be a boring topic. It could like be. It's, there's a lot of the same. We've got a big range on the website and yeah. like which and one's I, the best is really, there's no straightforward answer, is no, there? No, there's not. And I think maybe for, like, well, for me and maybe for you as well, when you work in a camping shop, you're just like, oh, a camping chair's a chair. Mm. But really when you think about it, it's not. And if you're not someone who works in a camping shop and you know about all the different chairs and there's just knowledge that you have about those products that are just organically there and you don't necessarily have to think about them too much. Yeah. But I think chair questions are probably, they make up one of the biggest subjects of, of sleeping bags and chairs probably are the Mm. biggest you know, question generators from customers. Mm. And they're also one of the most challenging ones, especially for people who are purchasing online because you can't sit in it and you can't give it that test and you can't reel around and do all the things you need to do to know that chair, what that chair, or yeah. if that chair, sorry, is going to be right for you. So Yeah, and there's trade-offs too. Some of them are easier to fold than others, but the ones that are harder to fold might be more comfortable. So then yeah. it's, it's hard to answer for someone what, what's your trade-off there, comfort yeah. or ease of folding. Com- I'd go for comfort, totally. quite frankly. Me too. Yeah. So – Ultimately, there are a couple of main chair types. Which we've sort of grouped them and it seems to – I don't think this is like an official kind of no. categorization. This it's just kind of ben what the Lauren industry is. Well, yeah, well, I, think, <laughs> I think it's driven a bit by the industry. True. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, we've kind of it, – it's reflected on our website, yeah. the, the um, categories that you've mentioned here, but uh, quad fold being the main, main. Quad type folds, of chair. I, I don't know about you, but I remember – when quad fold chairs first came out and they were like revolutionary because up until that point, everybody had those Southwester wooden um, collapsible flat, ones, flat yeah. folding chairs or those sort of style of director's chairs. There was mm. very, the quad fold chairs were almost revolutionary because you could just pack this chair up and then it was, became this tiny tube. Yeah. Why do you think it's quad fold? Like why is a gazebo that folds up in a similar manner not called a quad shelter? <laughs> I just thought of that on the fly. You love it. Looking at me like you are an <laughs> idiot. idiot. Yeah, Did you just say that on the podcast? But what, literally. Like, it's four legs, but every other. It's four legs and it folds. Yeah, but where's. But Maybe because a gazebo <laughs> you, has multiple points of axes of folding, whereas a chair has four legs and a single folding axis point on each side. So maybe it's because there are four folding axes that it's become quad fold, not because there are four legs. Do you reckon you know, people come here to hear us talk about why a quad fold chair is called a quad fold chair? Yeah, but if a gazebo has three points of folding axes on either side, then technically it would be a 12, what's 12 in it? Is it dodeca quad? Dodeca, <laughs> no, no, I'm not even going to try. Anyway, Moving on. This quad is a, fold chairs generally are the ones that like they pack up to, to a, long, chair, ultimately. A, a long, thin mm-hmm. uh, 
sort of package. So Correct. they're e- easily packed in, easily strapped to a roof rack or thrown in the back of the car yeah, or stack under really a shelf. Well. And stack well, yeah. They often will come in a huge variety of price points, yep. um, qualities, features, styles, all of that kind of stuff, sort of down from a, a $20 chair right through to, you know, a hundred and something bucks. So yep. um there are also variations of a quad fold chair, like moon chairs or sort of sofa y style chairs. Um, mm. also tend to be quad fold chairs. So yeah, quad folds anything that sort of has that little accordion fold thing underneath the legs. Yep. And the the cheaper ones are usually just a thin fabric. They yep. fold up really small, but when you start to put padding and stuff in it, they get more expensive. And a, a little bulkier. bit harder to sort of squash up when you yeah. fold them and yeah, bulkier. Yep. But they don't all have particularly high backs. And those that do have a high back don't have a really sturdy sort of headrest because they're for the most part, I'm trying to think of one that's not like this, but for the most part, that kind of headrest is a, just kind of a floppy bit of fabric that sits above the frame. Yeah. It's a bit of support, but not not quite the same as some of the sort of lounger chairs that we'll talk about later. Yeah. So you've also got directish chairs. A direct, or direct or deck chair. I had this come up recently in my life where someone said it was called a deck chair and I said, well, it's director's deck chair, kind of the same thing, aren't they? But what? Well, I think the the deck chair would be something that you would classically attribute to those Southwester chairs, like those wooden canvas um, I've always been told that they're deck chairs. Well, that's what I thought, but I Googled director's chair before and they're the ones that come up. Oh, okay. Maybe it's a difference between America and Australia or England and different, you know, languages of labels. Like when I was growing up in Queensland, a popper was a popper, but then I come to South Australia and it's like, what the hell's a fruit box? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think it's well, just one of those <clears throat> things, right? But maybe we could just set it straight now and say they're the same thing. But Unless you- anyone's got a better argument. Correct. But if you're in America, right, a director's chair is generally one of those Southwesters on longer legs because they sit there and they've got a, they're a little bit higher and they have their microphone and they're like cut and, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's that style of chair, which I think is where the name directors has come from. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And so, yeah. Somewhere to write your name or write director on the back. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's what, <laughs> if it's got director on it, it's a director's chair. Correct. Anyway. Anyway, so those so styles. They fold flat, right? Generally, yes, they fold flat and they open and the frame is very rigid. It's very boxy. It's quite square. Um, they'll have solid arms. They'll often have, you know, like a built-in table, all of that sort of jazz. Um, Gecko, the Oztent Gecko one comes with a removable table, but generally they open up and they have a swinging out table and they're Mm -hmm. solid and just canvas flap along the bottom, canvas flap along the back. Of your uncle. And the, the seating position is usually more upright. Very the upright, The quad-fold yeah. chair is a bit more sort of lounge back and usually have soft arms, whereas yep. a director's chair has kind of got a flat bottom and a flat back, a bit more upright, good to sitting at a table, mm-hmm. and also firm arms, which is beneficial for the, yeah. the elderly or, or um, it might be physically impaired to get yeah. in and out of the chair. Yeah, definitely. And then you have your lounges, and those ones are, I would say – when I, I was like lounges talking about those real layback recliners, but I think you'd probably put like, for example, the Coleman five position mm. chairs. They sort of have a bit of a deck chair vibe, but they have a much taller back and they have multiple reclining positions. Yep. But they don't have the leg bit on those ones. Yeah. yeah but then you have the lounges that Austrail make, um, like the sun lounger. Mm-hmm. And I think there's loads of different brands like Coleman do a sun lounger, Austrail, Zempire do one. one. I'm not sure if we've got it currently, but I know Zempire do one, um, Black Wolf do one, Oztent do one. And they're basically, you know, like your classic, I'd say Z shape. Almost like a banana lounge. Like a banana lounge. Banana lounge. Yeah, and you can sit upright in them or you can recline all the way back Mm. to basically be laying flat. They're Um, big, right? So Trans one, they're big, bulky, but really comfortable. Yeah, they're they're big and they're – bulky and can be quite heavy, but mm. people love them. Yeah. And I, I'm personally not at the point in my life where <laughs> I'm ready for a lounger, but I can see that time will come. I reckon I go a hammock sooner than a lounger just yeah, because of my true. lightweight yeah, mindset. That is true. I think I can fit a hammock into this much space, but those lounges are, are quite massive, right? So When you're super old and <laughs> decrepit and you have a bit of arthritis and you've had a hip replacement, I would literally hope that we're still friends so I can <laughs> watch you get in and out of a hammock. I'll still be stubborn enough going, no, oh, I'm all right. <laughs> I can do it. I'm not carrying those big heavy uh, things. I can imagine like falling out and just be like meant to happen. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. Just 
Leave me for a minute. <laughs> Uh, and then you've anyway. got your um, like your ultra compact or ultra light chairs. I love this category. Helen Ox is the big known brand, definitely in, in this category. Also, the expensive one, but in my opinion, worth every dollar you spend on it. If your I, budget stretches that I far. agree as well. But also, again, I know that price is a barrier um, mm. for a lot of people. But the Helen Ox are definitely the leaders in this field. They have a huge range and variety of different styles and shapes and sizes of those chairs. But ultimately, they are chairs that will often pack down to, you know, potentially even a, a one litre water bottle size. Um, the size of a two-person hike tent. A two-person yeah, hike yeah. tent. Like they're very compact. They're very light. They're extraordinarily comfortable. And then there are some other brands like um, EPE or Explore Planet Earth that mm. have done a sort of like a, I guess you could say a copycat chair basically. Yeah, same, it's same, basically but different. Yep. same, same, but different. Um, much lower price point in those particular instances you're probably sacrificing a bit of quality, I would say, in terms of um, Helinox just go to the nth degree with all of their materials and manufacturing yep. processes and they would probably outlive you. Um, yeah, lower price point, you know, you're still getting a decent product but, again, you're sort of getting what you pay for but yep. that makes them much more accessible for people um, and I think Climate do um, – Climate did a green version, which I'm not sure if we still have. We had it for know, a little while, but I'm not sure what happened to them. Oz Trail used to do a, had a range, range of sort of compact style chairs, yeah. which were a little bit different because some of them swiveled and – Yeah, I've got some for the kids. They are not weren't quite as good. They weren't as stable. There okay. was a steel um, frame in a, yeah. in a plastic nylon hub. They were, they were compact, but they were still heavy-ish compared to – Yeah. Because I've got Oz Trail ones for the kids and – Helenox from from myself and yeah. my, my wife because yep. you know why spend money on the kids, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, well, it I might mean, be something that you'd buy for them. You know, if their sixteenth birthday when they're starting to camp with mates and you know it's something they're interested absolutely. in. Absolutely, yeah, for yeah. sure. But the EPE ones are quite good. I reckon they're most great. people run into trouble with those if they're not. Uh, there's no. I, I'll take a step back. The Helenox ones are so well made that you can. Probably, while you should make sure they're set up properly, all the poles are seated in well. Probably the, the high quality materials um, give you a little bit of room for error there. Yeah. But with the cheaper ones, if you don't make sure the poles are really well seated in and perhaps don't treat it carefully, yeah. you can run into trouble sooner than you would a more expensive yeah. one. But they offer really good value for money, and it comes back to that whole: you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not buying a cheap product. It's it's worth what you pay for it. Yeah. And if you treat it well, you get your dollars worth out of it. Yeah, for sure. And the climate ones I didn't have much experience with, but there are other brands out there that um, do similar sort of chairs that mm -hmm. are a combination of that high quality DAC or alloys with, yeah. with glass filled nylon. Um, but Helinox is one that we carry. They've kind of led the, led the field and I love my Helinox chairs, yeah. the tables and stuff as well. So I, um, personally haven't found a Helinox chair that is exactly right for me in terms of does everything that I want it to do. I'll admit they're not as comfortable as They're, they're like comfortable, a but I am, when I'm at a campsite or when I'm set up around the fire, I am like the ultimate in camping sloth, <laughs> right? I want to, sometimes I want to, sit on my chair. Sometimes I want to sit upright, eat dinner on my lap. Sometimes I want to lay back. Sometimes I want to have my legs over the side. Sometimes I want to sit in it cross-legged. Sometimes yep. I want to, you know what I mean? Like my chair has to be yep. an ultimate, you know, thing for me. And I, there's not a Helinox chair that can do those things yet. And I wish there was because I love yeah. them so much and I would really like to be able to have a light, small, compact chair instead of the giant bazonga chairs that I have right now. Yeah. They're, they're I, I've noticed that they're not as comfortable. Like just to sit straight in, to sit down just and lean sit. back, it's yep. fine. But as soon as you want to start doing what you're saying, we'd maybe put, 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 sit on your leg or, or legs over the side or something like that. Yeah. It's not quite the same. They're not as sturdy. Yeah. They, they move around a little bit more and there's not quite the same padding. Mm. Um, they're also not insulated like a lot of chairs. So if you um, – if you if it's cold, then you need to put something down to sit on. Whereas like the the Oz tent, um, Gecko and um, Goanna chairs, we, we talk about them because they've long been a, a staple in yeah. the range. Have got insulation in them, so you sit on that and you, and it's it's a bit more insulated against the cold. So yeah, um, but the benefits are we up to talking about considerations, benefits yeah, and yeah. stuff. And why I love Helen Ox is that I would take four chairs 
if I took four quad fold chairs, mm. say medium range quad mm. fold chairs, they're probably four to five kilos each. Mm. Um, and measure, let's just say 90 centimeters by 20 in diameter. Yeah. Would be, be reasonable. Times four. That's a decent chunk of space in the car. Yeah. I can fit probably in less than half of that space four Helinox chairs. Yeah. I reckon. So, and less weight, probably the weight of it would be less than half as well because yeah. they're about one and a half. Oh, I should have come with these, these stats in my head. Yeah. But they are in my head. That's why I'm guessing, not written down, sorry. Yeah. Um, but far less weight, far easier to pack. You can, I mean, when I traveled, I didn't have to worry about strapping them on a roof rack or trying to fit them in. The chair's literally just tucked in the back of the car and I could pull mm-hmm. them out and set them up whenever I wanted. Mm. So for me, so yeah, so that's the like pack, uh, pack size and weight is definitely a consideration. So when mm-hmm. you're sort of looking at a chair and what to pick, and I think for me, I haven't been able to find one that ticks those boxes as well as the comfort, comfort of my chair. And ultimately, I have two giant chairs for me and my partner, and that's just that's just the price we pay at the moment. It sort of suits your setup though, because you've got your van, so you can it fit does, it in there, right? Definitely. But also I don't want to get stuck in that frame of mind that says, oh, just because I've got more space, you can I can just fill it up with yeah. stuff. Because it's not just the space, it's also the weight and how much stuff you have and all that mm. sort of jazz. So um and then when there's six of you, it's you know, it's like it's a- yeah, it's a, it's that's a, thing. a lot of chair space. And so, like my for me with the kids, um, I'm I'm going to be picking them up some EPE Pegasus chairs because that'll work for them mm. and how they interact and use their chairs and things like that. Um, because and oh, I'll talk about this later because we're going to talk about kids' chairs later on. But anyway, okay, cool. So yeah, so the considerations would be the weight and the pack size, how much space you have in your car, or how much space you have in your camper, or or your vehicle, or whatever your setup is to fit in chairs. Um, the weight of them, whether or not they're realistically practical for you to carry, because some chairs are actually really heavy, yeah. and that that can be a limitation for people. I know, um, you know, sometimes someone might purchase a chair because they do a lot of trips at the beach and they want to have a good solid chair that they sit on. But then when it arrives, they're like, I can't lug this, you know, 200 meters over sand. It's unreal. Yeah. So yeah, that sort of thing can be a consideration. So weight and pack size, the ultra compact light Helinox, they're kind of smallest and lightest and then quad fold probably after that. And then you get into director's chairs and lounges are the, are the bulkier, harder to, yeah. to cart yeah, chairs. Yeah, definitely. The exception with the director's chair is that Black Wolf compact director's chair, which they've made that folds up into like a suitcase almost and, and it's a bit easier to carry. Yeah, but it's and heavy. That, it's heavy, but that seems pretty cool. Like I mm. think for the most part, there's been some pretty decent feedback on – on those chairs. So it's been around um, for a long time. It's been, yeah, it has been around for a long time. And it's pretty nifty. But yep. um and then you've got the ease of setup because some chairs, like I had this amazing chair once historically, and I think it might have come from BCF or something like that. I, th- I have a feeling it was Wanderer or whatever. You it can't had like say a that on this- I can say what okay. I want. Okay, sorry. No, nah, but I think it had like a picture of a Boab on it, like a Boab tree. Oh, yeah. And I th- is that oh. Wanderer or is the brand nah, Boab? Boab is the brand. I okay. think that's like a um. Is it an, is it an old like Ray? Is it an old like Ray's outdoors? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But it's, anyway, it's like an in-house brand for one of those. It stores, was yeah. an amazing chair, and it was so comfortable when it was set up. But what I had to do in order to set it up was that it was sort of quad fold, but then it had these secondary upright supporting mm. legs, and then as I was unfolding it, I had to get this this um baton that swung down on a pivot from the top and one that swung up from the bottom and somehow sort of interlock them together before I could expand it further so then by the time the chair was fully expanded all of these individual separate legs had locked together and it was just a bit of a pain in the ass and so um and it was given to me as a gift and as I said it was a really great chair but um stuff like that is a bit of a consideration and mm. I think maybe it's it, good that's why we sort of do those product videos to try and show people the actual realistic you know practicalities of Mm. setting up a chair so um yeah if you're someone who is just maybe not lazy per se but you just can't be bothered stuffing around with trying to set something up or maybe you have um you know mobility issues in your hands or maybe you're not super strong 
how to set a chair up is a big factor. Well, the easiest ones are quad chairs and probably totally. director's chairs. Yeah, it's The easy. exception with some director's chairs is some of them uh, require a bit of muscle just to sort of click them in place. The old yeah. Sour Wester ones just kind of separated and sat there Completely. and it was fine. Many quad fold chairs literally just sort of – some you know, of them really are very easy. stiff as well. Like you've got to put quite a lot of muscle in to get them open. Yeah, there's a few sliding things. I know mm. the um, Ostent do a quad fold one that's got stiff arms and that's got a little um, section of the arm that slides and that creates a bit of difficulty yeah. in kind of getting it out because you can't twist it. you kind of got to pull it in four directions in an even sort of manner yep. and if you pull it too far one way it kind of gets jammed. So a little bit of muck around. But the easiest is just your very basic quad fold. Um, and some of the directors fold out really easy. But the loungers can be – I find them awkward to put up sometimes. They can be you awkward. Because the, the there's are so still many, there's so many your, different moving parts. It's not just yeah, a matter of right. opening it up. It's like you open it up and then that thing moves and then that is like, oh, I'm trying to get the tension. In. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, they can be awkward. So, yeah. Yeah. And then um, so chair structure is another big thing if you're sort of looking at your chair and considerations. It's like, okay, do I – want this chair to just sit around the fire or do I want to be able to sit up? Am I wanting to interact at a table mm-hmm. with this chair? So there's a couple of different sort of ways in which the shape and, and the structure of the chair will inform whether or not it's right for you. Absolutely. A quad fold chair, good example there. It got arms that kind of come right out the side, soft arms. And if you look at the front of the chair, measurement across the front of the chair is really wide. Correct. If you put them side by side against your average camp table, table you're not going to fit two of them side by side. So if you do want a chair for around the table, a director's chair that has upright arms is going to sit neater yeah. at, at the table. So. I mean, especially I've sort of seen some camp tables that say, oh, you know, this is an eight-person table. It's like, mate, good luck trying to fit four people there with your standard yeah. camp chairs. You fit it on one of those collapsible outdoor connection stalls that you love. Yeah. Be right. Yeah. Oh, well, I was actually going to mention those. I, I, did I well. literally was going to say if you were wanting to eat at a table, might be worth looking at a stool or a couple of small stool options or something that you can have just for the table. Well, it's exactly what we did in our trip. Four yeah. of those stools that sat around the table and then yeah. chairs to, to sit around. I mean, for us, we we'll eat. We don't really do any table stuff unless we're playing board games or what, yeah. whatever, but we mostly just eat on our laps and stuff now because my kids are older and it's a yeah. lot easier for them to do that. But um, yeah, yeah. Consider whether or not you want you need a chair that does all of those things, or if one thing is more important, and how you can sort of work around that. Okay, and just on chair structure, slight um, tangent, but um, material as well, steel yeah. or al- um, aluminium. Yeah. Um, probably uh, either way, using them at the beach, salt water and salt's going to corrode anything but i probably stick more with susceptible aluminium with steel. If you, yeah if you're going to use it in um mm-hmm. uh in marine environments a lot uh, aluminium is probably yeah. a better option but you still want to try and rinse that salt off as much as you can yeah um aluminium uh, aluminium obviously going to be lighter mm. than steel as mm-hmm. well so yeah um, yeah completely to consider and then of course features yeah cup holders they've all got a cup holder for some degree haven't they yeah, some of them do. Some of them don't at all. Like a lot of those compact uh, ultralight sort of compact chairs don't have a cup holder. You can get a, an additional mm. cup holder accessory that somehow sort of slides or clips onto the frame, but generally they don't really have them as standard. Mm. And then some chairs that have a cup holder, it's just this weird little fabric pocket that yeah. hangs off the side of the chair. And it's like, if I put my cup in that, it's just literally going to tip all out over. all my drink. Yeah, yeah. So Thanks for trying. You know, you, <laughs> you know? just did it so that you could have a bullet point on your description that that's said right. cup holder. Correct. Um, but you do have a think about the type of cup that you use. If you're someone that's a wine drinker and you sit around the campsite with a wine, a stemmed wine glass, those cup holders in the arm of the chair aren't going to do the job. Correct. But some of them actually have a little hook. It's not a holder. It's just a little, little hook, right? In, yeah. That you can just put the stem of the glass in and it holds it. Holds for it you. really well. So yeah, have a think about the type of glass yeah. or cup that you use to that, that's going to you know, make your uh, relaxing around the campsite easier. So you don't mm. have to put your, watch your wine on the ground all the time. Yeah, totally. And it's like those um, director's chairs, they don't technically have a cup holder, but on their swinging out table, there's like a receptacle built into the table that, yep. you know, sits your, sits your cup in. Yep. Um, but then you've got magazine slash book holders, which are those 
bits of flappy fabric things that oh, hang off right the side on. and you can fit a book in or a magazine or your yep. glasses or a pen or, you know, uh, growing up they were always used by like Nana to put her crossword book and pencils in or whatever. Yeah, okay. um, my mum uses it for novels and Yep. And things like that, and the kids just an organizer, just a thing, little organizing yeah. spot, and the kids use that use that on their chairs as well for their books, and and some of them also have in the arm, especially the quad fold chairs, which are have the soft arms. Some of them have a zip compartment which hangs down a bit, so you can put like your phone and mm. you know bits and pieces in there, and it's fully zipped up. Some of those are also cooler bags, so you, you yeah, have to some get of them drink, are insulated. Grab a drink, grab a second one, and put it in the cooler bag on your arm, so you've got. That's Another genius. I go, never so. even thought about that. I Didn't was you? just like, that's what it's for. How could you not fill think it up with What were you going to put in there? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, if you like cheese, go and get your yeah. Get, no, they're get cool. A, a wheel of brie and get another yeah, one yeah. for when you finish the first one. That's totally just fill yeah. it up with cheese, a couple of crackers, got your own little snack pouch. <laughs> Well, Nobody a, even needs to know idea, it's it? there. You can keep all the dips. Just have a tri- nothing, trio of dips in the arm of your chair. You why not? Cool. There's nothing worse See, than when a, when, a, when a cheese chair plate comes out and everybody just smashes the camembert and you like get one piece. You can just sit there just and keep your, your dips to yourself yeah, in your chair. Just, exactly. just some sneaky little, dips without anyone knowing it's even there. Your camembert stash sack. That's what it is. <laughs> anyway. Reclining. Um, yeah, whether or not it reclines. If you're a stargazer, then- Something to, yep. Some of them literally sit upright and then you pull the arms and it lays back and you can lay yeah. back and watch the stars at night. So. And you can, um, if you know, if you want to have a snooze or any of that sort of jazz. Like, and, and it's interesting because of those lounges or those reclining chairs, you can get a range of different sort of structures within those as well. So if you want a chair that you can sit up to a table in and you want more rigid support, but you also want to recline, there are those options available mm. for you. So it's just trying to work out what what features and functions of your chair work best and yep. seeing if there is actually a chair that ticks all those boxes because often there will be. Um, lumber adjustments and pillows is uh, mm. something to think about. Lumber, if you've got particular back issues or if you're sitting on it for a long time. Now, the lumber adjustments come in various forms with uh, – uh, quad fold chairs, it's often a strap or something that goes around yeah. the back and you can tighten it just to pull in your, your lower back a little bit. But then yeah. um, some of them just naturally have that sort of shape just built shape. into it. A deck chair or director's chair generally doesn't have a lot of lumbar support because there's usually a bit of a gap at the back there for some of them. Yeah. Um, or but I think the they're quite upright. So I think sometimes Don't need it. the people that um, need lumbar support generally need them in those chairs that you sort of – you sit in and your body naturally slouches, like your posture isn't maintained mm-hmm. well and therefore you need a bit more support from the chair to help maintain your posture because yeah. it takes a lot of energy for your body to keep its posture in those sloppy chairs. Yeah, and they're a bit of a sling, aren't they? So you yeah. naturally end up kind of your back sags back a little bit if you don't have that support. Yeah, so, so if you're someone who has those sort of issues, directish chairs might be a really great option for you because it negates the need for lumbar support. Yep. But if you do want a bit of more of a relax and a bit more of a, you know, just a, a chill, not so structured chair, like you said, the um, I think the like the gold is it Goanna? Yeah, the Oz, Goanna Oz or the King ones. Kakoda, like some of those Oztent ones, for example. I think Darcy yeah. Cosy do a chair as well. Like you said, they have those straps, strap. so you do have a bit more adjustment options there. Yeah, and some of pillows, especially the lounges, will have an adjustable pillow. But then even quad fold chairs, not really a pillow, but they'll have a a section in the in the top of the, the back of the chair that unzips. Mm. So you can put the storage bag in there, and it kind of turns into a bit of a headrest for you. Yeah, and you or you could stuff it with your jumper or Whatever. stuff like that. Yep. Um, so that's pretty. Hot, you've noted hot spots on here. Well, yeah, that's because cool. only them- because you know it's a relatively. I don't say new feature. I mean, I think the last year or so they've been more prevalent, but they're even more prevalent now. Do you know yeah. what I mean? They're just getting more and more prevalent. And that these are chairs which I know we've mentioned before, but they're they're chairs or furnitures that has a zip pocket that you can put in. It's like an insulated pocket. An insulated pocket that you can put in a um, – well, the Ostent chairs, they come with them. They're like a, an ice pack thing but they've got that little metal disc in them and then when you click there's a chemical reaction and it makes them hot. It's like yep. it's some sort of salt-based reaction yeah. thing, right? But you could, if you don't have those, you could use wheat bags or yeah. you could literally use anything. Yeah, just as a hot, hot water pouches or hot, something like yeah. that. So there's just little pouches built into the chair. That so allow you, you put to in put there. in your yeah. own heating things. There's some uh, techie versions as well that I don't know if there's any available at the moment. I'm not sure they really took off, but USB 
heated chairs as well with there, a power pack that I don't. There was one that we, did, that we on did. Yeah. And it was short lived because I think. In theory, it was way better than the practicality of it because right. ultimately being USB powered, you know, five volts, the amount of resistance within that little heating circuit was just not enough to combat the actual cold. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, there's a lot of power from a – Yeah, there's a tiny little bit of power creating this tiny little bit of heat and if you're at, you know, the kid's footy on a Saturday morning and you want a chair to sit on or you're camping and you're next to the river and it gets to one degrees at night, it's – it's not going to cut it. So, yep. but I have seen some real hardcore versions that are made from like um two forty volt like, heated chairs or something. No, like <laughs> Makita and Milwaukee. Oh right, that you can interchange your your power tool batteries in them, and they're not too bad. Oh, so like I was 18, really envious of someone who had like a Milwaukee jacket. Yeah, they do. The and then on the inside, they had their little power tool battery on the inside in this pocket, and the whole jacket was just. So heavy. Oh, yeah, heavy, but who's <laughs> complaining when you're freezing? Anyway. But, yeah, um, so I think out there there might be chairs that have sort of that capability, but they're not around. You can also create that yourself anyway, obviously, the hot water bottle or something. Yeah, you don't totally. need a pouch, but these are just conveniently built into conveniently. the chair so you can yeah. um, put them in relevant spots. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I mentioned this one before, so I jumped ahead, but solid arms. Okay. But I do think that is a really good consideration for a lot of people um, that if you have trouble getting up and down, then look for a, a chair with solid arms yeah. because you're going to need to to use your arms to help yourself get in and out. And getting in and out of a like a quad fold chair with soft arms, especially when it's a bit work. saggier yeah. as well. And having said that, I mean we do say, oh yeah, mobility issues, or if you're someone who has trouble getting in and out of chairs, having previously worked in the shop or helping people choose chairs before in real life, a lot of people don't realise that that's something that really benefits them and feels good for them until they try it side by side with another chair. Yeah. And they could be people who wouldn't identify as having mobility issues or having trouble getting up and down. And I mean, you know, um, one, some guy also just said, you know what, like often when I'm camping, I have a few cans and I'm probably get a little bit unsteady on my feet and I've fallen out my camp chair quite a few times trying to get up. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, you have to consider yeah. it being you know, like whether your alcohol intake is going to inform yeah. the chair you choose. But it was even just a factor like that of like yep. how much easier it'd be to get in and out of the chair when I've had a couple of beers. And just it's something like, to think about. So it's something to think about for sure. Yep. If you can, I so ideally try these in a shop if you can. Yeah. Get out there and try them side by side because they are all different. Yeah. And, um, I mean, yeah, sometimes it's like you really can't – necessarily no for sure unless you try to out yourself. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, I, you know, I've spoken to someone on the phone before who's the same height as me and I literally was on the phone with her while I went and sat in every single chair and right. I like gave her a, a quick talk through of all the chairs she was looking at and how it felt for me. And even though she was the same height as me, my own interpretation of what's comfortable, you know, it's still mm. quite subjective. So I think being able to consider all of these different things means that you're on your way to picking the best possible chair that you probably could for yourself. We've talked about doing that before, just you and I jumping into the shop and just saying, we're going to sit on this and I think use we should your still opinion do it. and my opinion, different heights, different sex, different body makeup. You just definitely going. still think we should do it. I, yeah. I said it was my idea to do like this hot or not oh, thing where Ben and I credit, like, I am, but <laughs> it's like we, if we, if we had like, say hypothetically, we have our 10 most popular chairs, right? Yep. And then I'll try them all out and rank them on like yay to nay and then you try them out and rank them on yay to nay. Yeah. And we'd probably get pretty different outcomes, I reckon. I think so. And it's, I think it, because it does a lot of things. It proves that everyone's like totally different, mm. right, and it just helps, uh, I guess, guide the two different heights and yeah. maybe the male, female We're very comfort, different body shapes. We're very shapes, different yeah. heights. Yeah, I reckon it'd yeah, be cool. We'll do it. Yeah, we will do it. Um, Chairs for more than one. Tush. There are – now this – I was going to pull you up on the quad fold thing now because you said it's got more than one light folding bit, but you called these ones quad fold, but they would have more than one folding bit. I didn't say Oztrail Galaxy quad fold, and I'm pretty sure that the Galaxy range aren't considered a quad fold. It's just a Galaxy 2 and a Galaxy 3. I won't. I won't. <laughs> I, won't I won't elaborate on that. I'm pretty sure you said otherwise earlier, but I can't. Did I really? I, I didn't note it down and I don't know for sure, so I'm not going to argue something that I know I can't win. Picks or it didn't happen. What was that? 
pics or it didn't happen. What have you ever mean? heard of that saying? No. Don't have a photo of it. Didn't happen, mate. <laughs> well, I can't take a photo. Pics or it didn't happen. I can't take a photo of what you said. Yeah, but maybe. Anyway, moving on. I think we're both wrong. Um, anyway, there's um, chairs that fold out for two, three people. So it's, it's like a quad fold chair. Yeah. But it's kind of joined together. So there's an arm on each end and then it's a lounge in the middle. It's like a gazebo and a quad fold chair had a baby. <laughs> yeah, good one. It's like, <laughs> but um, seriously, these are so popular. Yeah. And I'm just like. They're massive. Why? Why would you have, like, why would you have a chair like this? But they're so popular. People love them and not just for more than one person. Some people buy the two or three people chairs just for themselves because they want to lay on it or they want to swing their legs up or they want to have more of an experience with their chair than just sort of sitting in it. And some people use it for their their dogs, the dogs you know. Their yeah, dogs sit up that. there on their on the chair with them and all yeah. sorts of stuff. So they're really popular and they're pretty they're sort of pretty cool, but I think they're heavy. If you're setting up for a weekend, they're I suppose, big and they're heavy. Um, it's kind of cool to have, but yeah, they are pretty bulky. Yeah, I think if your type of trips are drive to um, from A to B and you stay at B and then you drive back to A, I think they're fine. Yeah. But if you're sort of doing touring or set you up know, and pack down a lot, tr- yeah, set up and pack down a lot. No, no, not for me. Not Too for me. Bulky. But people yeah. love them, so I think they're amazing. Not saying they're bad. Not saying they're not bad, they're just not for us. But, yep. yeah, people love them and there's a lot of people out there that have done, you know, send in cool photos and stuff of them loving their Galaxy chairs. So, And they've been the, around for a long time and that says something. Yeah, yeah, there's a few on the Facebook page of people sitting on them with their dogs, I think. Yeah. I, I vaguely re- recall some of those pictures. And we've, we've talked for ages about chairs. I thought – the tent that pegs was going to be about. a struggle. Then I went chairs. I don't know how much we can talk about chairs. I don't know if people are bored or not yet, but we're still going yeah. on chairs here. But we've still got kids' chairs here to discuss. So, um, well, the reason why – I also haven't written beach chairs down, but I just want to quickly do a segue of beach chairs mm. because – Yesterday in the office, I was like, I don't get beach chairs. Can somebody just explain to me what the vibe is with beach chairs? Like, is it really that big a deal if you're sitting 10 centimetres off the ground versus just sitting on a towel? And then a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, but like my parents use them because getting up from the ground is a challenge. And if they've got a a beach chair and there's some structure there and some arms, then they can get up and down off the ground easily. And I was like, I didn't even consider that. Like, that's really good. And then Kyle, who's one of our new um, social media guys, he was like, I'm a fisherman. And if you are sitting on the beach for hours and hours and hours and hours at a time, it really makes a massive difference, especially if you're early morning or late at night and the Mm. beach is cold or the beach is really hot, like sitting above the ground and whatever. So beach chairs are a thing. Gives you, um, it gives you a bit of backrest when you want to, if, if you're you not lying down, if you want to sit up and, and watch, I don't know, the sunset, sunrise, watch yep. the water, whatever. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, if you want to read but you don't want to lie down. I mean, they're all factors that I didn't consider, which I'm really grateful for everyone. Like, yeah, this, because now I'm like, yeah, beach, beach chairs are pretty cool. Whereas I've always sort of been like, why would you buy a beach chair? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so beach chairs. But things to consider for beach chairs are pretty much the same we've already talked about. Yep. But also – more put more highlight um and expression on that steel versus aluminium and Most of them are. potentially wood there are some chairs made of like wood or plastic they're going to be a lot better than your steel based chairs yep. and make sure if you've got beach chairs that yeah sort of actively caring for them washing off the sand all that sort there's of there's some similar looking ones that are low like that that have a steel frame but they're geared as Aus- uh, austral do a festival chair but yeah it is geared for festival use or um, if music in a in a park somewhere where mm. you don't want to be sitting in front of people, you're all sitting on the ground, so yeah. it's low rise. But they're probably not. They're still frames, so probably not as good for the beach. Most of yeah. the actual beach ones that are made with blue blue and white stripes and all that, yeah, kind of, yeah, all that kind of jazz. Going to use your term there, all that jazz. <laughs> um, uh, or have an alloy frame. Yeah, but kids chairs. Kids I'm, chairs. I'm, I'm, I'm yay because you are can you get a yay? When, no when they're really young. I've I had kids chairs when they were really young, small kids chairs yeah um they're affordable and small to pack and i really wanted my kids to get into camping so i wanted mm. them to have their own identity at the chair mm-hmm. so i think my my oldest had a little kookaburra chair mm-hmm. um which then went to my youngest but i had another coleman chair along the way which had a little cooler arm in it as well and they loved it. But when I'm saying kids' chairs, I'm not saying should you buy a chair for your kids or should you make them sit on the ground. I'm saying should you buy a kid's chair? Well, the, the kookaburra one wasn't an adult's chair. And so this is the thing. I'm <laughs> I'm like totally, I'm like nay. Why? Because the amount of time that your kids are actually in them 
is quite small but in terms you- of the amount of literal functional time that they are the right size for those chairs. It's really quite small. Once your kids outgrow them, there's not a huge amount that you can do about it. It's very rare that people actually want your secondhand kids use chair. So then, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things that just sits in the shed and nobody uses it. Nobody wants your secondhand kids chair because everyone's off buying their own kids chair. And it just becomes something that just goes in the bin. Whereas it's like, instead you could buy just a, even just quite a cheap chair. So the point I'm at with my kids now is that they're all what are they now? They're like 11, two 13 year olds and a 15 year old. They're all in the same chairs that they've been in since they were two or three or four. How do they get into it? A big chair like that. It's not a stable for them to climb up into a chair. It's just, it's, it's like a, a $30 sort of Coleman chair. It has a cup holder, books and magazine holder and a bit of a zip thing in there, in there, whatever. And they've got scribbled their names on it and they've stuck stickers on them over time. And they've all had their own personal chair. And when they were little, they, we, they did have a bit of help getting up in, into their chairs and, and what have you. But that's just, so what are we now? We're like, those chairs have, at, you know, 10 years that I've been using those chairs and they're still good. And I'm only thinking now, okay, well, they're probably not super comfortable now, especially for the bigger ones, even though they're an adult chair, I'd probably want to get them a, a better comfortable chair. Cause I sat in one and I'm like, Oh, I don't know if I'd sit in this, but so I'm, and same sort of thing with kids sleeping bags. Like I'm just a little bit of the opinion that if you're somebody who has young kids and you are keen on camping and you intend to keep camping, just get just get them a, a decent sized chair that will last them for more than a year. I can see your point. I, I am on the other side of the fence there for you than you. But that's Dave, okay. Because I, I you quite, know I'm passionate my about my got, opinions. <laughs> <laughs> my kids have got their own sleeping bag kids sleeping bags. Um, my oldest is probably at the point now where she just needs to get a, a ladies or an adult bag. Mm. Um, and they had when they were younger their own uh, small kids chairs and I didn't have any problem giving them to – I just got – because it's, it's $20, $30 for a kid's yeah. chair. They're not expensive. Yeah. Um, and I gave it to someone afterwards. I think I just put it on Facebook Marketplace or something and someone come and picked it up. I, I yeah. mean, maybe I got five bucks. Probably not. I yeah, wasn't yeah. like they just gave that away. Um, and it gave them real identity around the campsite. They could easily carry that chair to another mm. spot and go and set up their own little – did they use the them for long something. though? Maybe well, I just breed yeah, yeah. giant children. <laughs> um, I don't. I can't put my finger on just when they stopped using it, but it would have got three to four years of use out of it. Yeah, I, right. I reckon. That's pretty by, crazy. By the end of it, it was really at the point of saying you really need a new chair. Yeah. Okay. Because you, you know, you can sit in it, but, but your knees are around your ears. Usually too big. Yeah. Now. Yeah. You only just fit in there, and now they've got adult chairs, which are my youngest is just sort of crawling into. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm all for it. But I hey, mean, you know, I'm not knocking opinions. people who buy kids' chairs. I'm just saying I'm not necessarily, you know, if you're thinking about whether or not you need to get a kid's specific chair, maybe you don't. Just yeah. think about that. I don't I know. won't go into my opinions on sleeping bags because that's not what we're here to talk about no, today. Um, we're not. Because I've got thoughts on that too, but I think we've talked long enough about chairs anyway. I'm not into kids' sleeping bags. I'm not going to talk about it. I'll I'm talk. Not, I'll I'm speak not to you offline about your opinions there. <laughs> okay, well there you go. I think we've covered we've, um, and we've given we've enough. given everyone a bit of an argument. Classic Ben and Lauren debate at the end of this thing, but that's okay. We really need to let people know these debates are going to happen at the start of the episode so they don't miss out. But I, I think that it's good though because there might be people listening who are like, oh yeah, actually that's a good point, Lauren, or whatever. Or some people listening where they're like, oh, I'm not going to buy a kid's chair, and then they're like, oh, hang on a minute, Ben makes really good point. Do you know what I mean? So it's like mm. it's not. I'm not here to necessarily win anything and you're not either, but but ultimately if we have differing opinions, it means that people will be able to Two sides make better the choices for themselves Absolutely. ultimately. Yep. And we haven't said I have a black wolf black wolf sofa chair, I think is the chair that I use. Because if someone's listening and they're like, oh my God, I sit the same way Lauren does at camp and I need this and I need that and whatever. Yeah. And um, I'm just going to quickly use my um, phone here because I have, I'm going to come up with the actual name for it. But also for any people out there who are massive dudes, because my partner's a massive dude, he's about <laughs> the same height as you, but I reckon he's probably 30 or 40 kilos heavier than you. 
he cannot find a chair that works. And I reckon we went through three or four chairs that lasted a couple of months until we finally settled on this one. And it really works for him. And so that's probably good feedback as well. Um, and they, you know, come in a couple of different colors, but, uh, so anyway. you, so you won't buy a kid's chair because you don't want to have to buy again yet. Your partner's been through three or four chairs in a few months. <laughs> Yes, but if you have a partner like mine, you understand the importance of making sure that they're happy. I'm just going to leave it there. Happy, <laughs> you know the whole happy wife, yeah, happy yeah. life thing. We're happy husband, happy happy husband, happy, happy life. I don't know. Happy part. Yeah, we're not married, but anyway, <laughs> um, it's called the Black Wolf padded sofa chair. So it's sort of like a hybrid oh, yeah. chair slash moon it's chair. It's like the moon chair. They're sort of like a moon of chair, but a tiny bit more structure. But man, that is, it's big and it's bulky and it's heavy, but you know, and I've, I've thrashed it. Done a little DIY repairs a few times, but I can literally <laughs> sit in that upside down with my legs hanging off the back if I want and still be comfortable. It's right. It's r- amazing. Well, there you go. It's a good wrap for a Black Wolf chair there. Yeah. Check it out online at snowies.com.au. Done. done now. Let's wrap this up. I think people, if they're not already bored, they're. I think some, I think Kieran just said there. you've been talking for, for 40 minutes about camp Kieran, chairs. Kieran's our producer. Right, moving on. Thanks for sticking with us, folks. Thanks. I hope that was interesting. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Catch you later (laughs) next week. Yep.